Welcome back to The Breakfast. We're moving our conversation now to Ogun State and the whole of the Southwest, where there's a developing story that says uh, Sunday Igboho, um, who has become very popular lately, um, stormed Ogun State. And of course, uh, with you know, the plans to chase away killer headsmen from you know, communities in Ogun State. If you remember, sometime last week we had had a conversation about uh, the Southwest governors and their meeting with Mark Ban, um, you know, getting to certain resolutions mm -hmm. with regards to uh, creating an environment of uh, safety in the Southwest. Um, we've invited this morning a political analyst, uh, Mr. Agbola Oba, to join us and share his thoughts. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us, sir. Good morning. The opportunity to be on your side virtually. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. So le let's get into this uh, conversation. I'm going to start with the resolutions by the South uh, West governors um, in their meeting with uh, Mietiala and other, you know, interested um, uh, personalities. Um, they had resolutions banning uh, grazing, banning underage grazing also, um, head headsmen rather. Um, those resolutions, I expect, or a lot of people thought, were meant to create uh, peace in the Southwest and reduce the tension. Um, so now we see Sunday Igbo once again going to Ogun State with the same intentions of chasing the Wikiler headsmen. Does this mean that, you know, that didn't work? Or the meeting with the Southwest governors and those conversations have not been effective? It was not designed fundamentally to work because it was a, it was more of a picture opportunity meeting than a meeting with an organic effect to remedying the fundamental this the, the fundamental factors that led to the meeting there is no meeting anybody will hold with me that can that can have the effect that Mieti Allah ostensibly subscribes to at the meeting. Because Mieti Allah is not in control of the elements who are fomenting fundamentally the elements who are fomenting the an uh, unfortunate incident culminating in the tribal clashes. So forget about any meeting with Mieti Allah translating to an effective, effective solution or resolution of the ongoing problem. All right. So when Sunday Boho uh, allegedly invaded a Fulani settlement in the uh, in Oyo State, people, different quarters, political activists said they should not arrest Sunday Boho so that this does not escalate into something else. But it now seems that the the fact that the government was kind of uh, you know very complacent with the whole issue with Igboho has now empowered him so to speak to go into Ogun State and declare war on headsmen. Would you agree that that's the fact or not? Totally wrong. Totally wrong. Your question as a journalist is posed because you have to work with uh, you have you have to. You have to work with the information at your disposal. But let's be very honest with ourselves. The Nigerian state, especially because of the intellectual laziness of our leaders across the value chain, irrespective of partisan divide, because of the fundamental intellectual laziness of our, of our leaders, the Nigerian state has perfected the art of making of making common, common uh, chances of turning them into folk heroes. Sunday Bo is the latest beneficiary of the failure of the Nigerian state. And indeed, the institutions of security of the Nigerian state to do their jobs. And because the people are found a hero in a man who 
he is predisposed to asking them. That is why beyond his natal state or his ancestral state of your state, that is why he has now been invited. Invited, you must use the word. I heard you before we went live use the word invasion. I heard your uh, your colleague use the word storm, but I am telling you authoritatively that the indigenous communities who are the victims of the infliction of the lack of respect for the rule of law of these largely foreign Fulani others coming from as far as Mali, Niger, coming from as far as Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, as a result, one of climatological negative climatological impact, uh, impact in the Sahel, and as a result of that triggering communal disputations, they are coming as far as, 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 as far down as Nigeria, and because of the utter incompetence or parochialism, whichever one you want to choose, because of either the utter incompetence or parochialism of the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, they have found green pasture in Nigeria, inflicting pains on local community. And so those communities, now seeing that the institutions of state have failed them, there are 27, 27 MDAs, ministries, departments, and agencies in Nigeria today that are constitutionally and statutorily recognized to be in charge of security from the armed forces to NSCDC to 27. And all of them are failing the average Nigerian, the average Nigerian man, especially the average Nigerian farmer, allowing foreigners to come and inflict right. havoc and wreak, and wreak havoc on their farms. And now they are perfected. And it's not peculiar to Sunday Bo, you are only talking about Sunday Bo here. Yeah. In the Northeast, don't you have the civilian joint, the JTF, the civilian JTF in the Northeast? Don't you have people who are, who are now resorting to self help in the state of the president and the neighboring states, states of, the, of the Northwest against banditry? The Nigerian state is failing. We have an incompetent president. And as at this juncture, more of Sunday goals we raise. Right. Because people are now putting their hope on people like him. Um, Mr. Mr. Um, Oba, the issue here is that Sunday Boho said that Ogun State had invited him, right, to come and help them chase our herdsmen. But I have a statement here from the Ogun State government refuting this report, saying they did not enlist the help of Sunday Boho. This is the, the Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Abdul Wahid Odusile, dismissing this in uh, Abbe Okuta. He said they did not invite Sunday Boho, and that's why we're using the word invasion, if the state government is denying, you know, inviting him into Ogun State. So just uh, that if clarity the state there. Don't don't buy don't buy all the all the uh, I want to be very careful and circumspect in my use of language, but you see, don't buy all the all the trash coming from official don. Official don knows they, they fail. Look, if the state government knew that Sunday Bo was was a disturbance to peace, Ogun State Government, Ogun State Governor has the commissioner of police he could have called to restrain his movement or not even allow him on the pretext of public peace not to enter the state. So they knew he was in the state. They knew he moved from Abel Kuta to Yewa North to go as a result of the fact that he was invited by people, communities. And what did they do? They allowed him to move freely and that they are doing what they are doing now is an indication that you have a dystopic federalism. They have to say what Abuja wants to hear and also make sure that they allow him to function with a view to, to giving the, 
the governor, the portraiture of a caring and connected governor with his people. You see the dilemma, you see the dilemma of the Nigerian state. We are in a big mess in this country. All right. This federation is not working. The the unfortunate, unfortunately, the president that campaigned in 2015 that he was he was pre predisposed to rest to restructuring or uh, or subsidiarity or the uh, uh, devolution. The president is now an agent of entrance to allow restructuring, and in the context of where we are, this is the this is real politics. People have to take to suffer. Mr. Balaba, I, I, I want to quickly jump in here. Um, I want you to, you know, quickly speak on um, the Fulani perspective of this now, the Fulani community that has lived in Ogun State and in the Southwest, those who have been relatively peaceful neighbors um, in the last couple of decades. Um, I want you to quickly speak on how the actions of a few can affect the lives and safety of others. And also, what would you expect from the leadership of the Fulani community at a time like this? And it's not just you know, from the <laughs> Southwest. Unfortunately, hello? Yes, go ahead, please. The situation in Ogunstate, unfortunately, may get worse before it gets better. We now have a character called Wakil leading a group of renegade X-Men to inflict massive economic damage on communities, burning, cutting down cashew plantations and cashew trees, cutting down on cocoa trees, and burning them. Massive. Now, that takes us to the position where the Northwest is now. We are in a state of quasi-banditry in the in Ogo State, and the Yoruba nation will not take it. I am talking as a Yoruba man who now, because of my level of education, is still subscribing, is still subscribing to sanity. I know I have friends in the diaspora who are already contributing money to send monies to our own hoodlums too. So, so, so to how do we? People. So how do if we prevent Nigerian it from? Does not do something heavy enough. Mr. Bolaba, the United Nation will raise his own illegal army to fight these people. Great. So, so how do we? How do we prevent it from going? From getting worse, like you've described. Is there a role that you expect the leadership of the Fulanese to have played at a time like this, or maybe even months ago? Um, to prevent it from getting to where it is today? And how can we also prevent it from getting to where you are describing now? The full and in leadership, the full and in leadership, unfortunately, is a victim of what other tribes are, com are, are complaining about. I don't know why journalists don't get it. You don't get it. The Sultan of Sokoto, who is the ostensible leader of the Fulanese in Nigeria, is now has now been reduced to saying that in instances, seven in ten instances of kidnapping and banditry, that Fulanese are said to be the perpetrators. Evidence put so the Fulani leadership, the ostensible Fulani leadership is now in a state of capitulation. The Mieti Allah guys that you guys, are, that you refer to as full of leaders, the Mieti Allah guys are semi-literate people who, like in most parts of Nigeria, have, have taken leadership from the strategic leaders. And let me be very honest with you, they just use Mieti Allah to make money for themselves. They can't control these characters. They cannot control them. So if I hear journalists talk about Fulani leadership, I shake my head. You people are intellectually lazy. You Nigerian journalists, you are so intellectually lazy that you are buying All right. the, the Fulani leadership as capitulated. Mr. Bola, right, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's uh, uh, unfortunately, we, we're out of time. You know, we, don't, we don't have um, that more time on the conversation again. Um, it, it's, a, it's, it's a question is it and, and is expected. Um, Ms. Agbalaoba, 
uh, it's a question, you know, and so we expect, you know, that we'll be able to go through the numerous angles of the conversation. It is not describing in any way um, journalism in Nigeria or how questions are, you know, created in Nigeria. It's expected that we go through the different angles of this conversation and, ex you know, expand it as much as we can. But thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate you. your time this morning. L um, always lovely speaking with you. Always very interesting. Uh, would uh, definitely speak with you again. Thank you very much. All right. Have a great day. I always enjoy this. I, I always yes. enjoy this. <laughs> so, so many other questions to, to, to be asked. Like, uh, if we had enough time, we would have loved to explore the angle. Sunday Buhu raised this. Also, the governor of Kano State, Abdullahi Ganduji, that uh, you know, movement of cattle from the north to the south to be banned. Is this the solution? Is this a final solution uh, to this? Also, should Sunday Buhu be prosecuted? Remember, this whole thing began when he went into a Fulani settlement in Oyo and you know, burnt houses, chased away the leader there should he be prosecuted i mean he's committed a crime and he's not answering for that he's now like pat patrolling the south uh the, the, the south as as a free man and now in or you're still in ogun state it's also Ooh. it's also in, you know one of the things that um Balaba noted before calling john and lazy um was the fact that there are 27 ministries and agencies of government that are you know have the responsibility of protecting nigerian lives and property and they don't seem to be existent. The only one that we really hear about is the police, the army, and the DSS. The rest of them almost do not exist. Um, it almost feels like they are just salary earners without actually playing the role that they should play. And yes, yes um, it is always expected that when there is a complete failure of leadership on certain levels, people will resort to self-help. And that's why you would continue to see these people spring up here and there. Mm. Does the Nigerian government have the moral justification to act for Sunday Iboho's arrest when they have failed in their responsibility to protect the people? And yes. would you always um, you know, get to that level before we start to have these conversations? Should um, cattle be moved from the north to the south? Should cattle be moved at all in the first place? There is there's always been the idea of ranching. Our guest sometime last week mentioned that we're not top five or maybe even top ten yes. in the you know, high, highest um, exporters of uh, of Or um, the quality uh, of the meat to produce uh, produce. in, exactly. in the first place. So why exactly do we keep fighting over cattle? We've, we've had a conversation about cattle for the last six years. It is insane that we are the giant of Africa and we've been talking about cattle And we can't for just tame years. this issue and nip it in the bud. Makes no sense, absolutely. Oof. Let's now talk about more matters regarding security. And this will be about the Chibok School Girls. It's an issue we've been talking about for years. And it's come up again due to fake news and misinformation. Details about that with two security experts on The Breakfast. <laughs> 